We are now going to turn our attention to applying boundary conditions to our 3D model. So this boundary conditions will represent how our structure is connected to the ground and what is constraining it from moving or restraining it from moving through space. Now the support tool in S-Frame is going to be a lot of value to us with this application and allows us to model restraints on our joints in six degrees of freedom. So imagine here, this is my global coordinate system origin right here. This is the global X, Y, and Z, and this is my joint. We can apply joint, uh, excuse me, joint restraints in different degrees of freedom. We can do X translation, and if we just apply an X translation support, that's going to be represented with a single green arrowhead in the X axis. Y translation will be represented with a single green arrowhead in the Y axis, and Z translation will be a single green arrowhead in the z-axis. And then if we add rotation, starting with x-rotation, it's a double green arrowhead. And that will be in addition to the x-translation, which we still have. Y-rotation, and then if we do all six degrees of freedom, we have this fixed symbol. So this joint here won't be able to move or rotate about any degree of freedom. Now we have different types of boundary conditions. Uh, we can model supports which are fully fixed or fully pinned. They're, they don't offer any flexibility whatsoever. We also have springs, which are uh, some flexibility built into them. They can deflect with a certain stiffness. And then we have base isolators, and even more than that, actually. We have nonlinear springs, which can be compression only. They can have a maximum stiffness. They can have a gap where they don't engage until a certain point. So really, there's a lot of different options. And more accurate support modeling and analysis can also be done in S Foundation, which can be integrated with S Frame. Now, for our simple model here, right now we just have these two joints at the bottom of the screen. And these two joints here don't actually have any supports on them yet, or any boundary conditions. We haven't told them how they're supposed to be connected to the ground. So I can use the support tool. If I left click on this, the data bar will update, and it'll have six different degrees of freedom here that I can constrain. The constrained degrees of freedom are going to show up with blue boxes around. T represents translation, R represents rotation, and you can probably imagine X, Y, and Z correspond to the degree of freedom. We also have uh, spring supports that can be defined as well, but we won't get into that at this stage. So we have to decide, are we going to use fully fixed supports, pinned, or a combination of uh, pin and fully fixed? I'm going to use fully fixed, which means all six of these boxes will be blue. And I just left click on the joint I want to apply this to. And I'm basically telling S-Frame that this joint can't move or rotate in any degree of freedom. And if I were to right click on this joint and go to properties, here I'll be able to see the spreadsheet uh, for my joint spreadsheet here. We have, if I just scroll over, some joints are fully fixed in all degrees of freedom, while others are free. So the two top ones are free, they can move in any degree of freedom. And we often get asked, do we need to apply a support uh, to represent a connection between two members? And the answer is no. If you assign a support, that's basically allowing the forces that are being applied to your model to go into the ground at that location. And I have a feeling that's probably not what you want in most connection designs. So think about supports as only being where you'd want your forces to go into the ground, your foundation locations, essentially. 